Hey guys, how's it going? For the past few weeks, I've been taking a look at this little telescope just over my shoulder right here, the Starfield 60mm quadruplet astrograph. Now, this has been very kindly sent over by First Light Optics here in the UK for review purposes. And just like to say, of course, thanks to those guys for the opportunity to actually take a look at this thing, get it in my hands and really put it through some tests and give you the best possible review that I can from that. Now, I've got an awful lot to say about this telescope so but before we really get into that i obviously want to take you through any disclosures or anything like that thankfully there isn't really much to say but i'm going to say it all anyway for the sake of complete transparency now first light optics have a total hands-off review policy which is in complete alignment with my own review policies which i always adhere to on this channel so it was a, just a natural fit yeah all that really means is that i've got complete creative control freedom over what I do, what I say, how I test and things like that. I can just do whatever I need to do, basically, to give you guys the best review that I possibly can. Um, further than that, anyway, I have an affiliate link for this thing, but other than that, I'm not receiving any money or anything like that. I still have to send the telescope back when I'm done with the review period. And uh, that is about it. So all that said, <laughs> let's get on with the review itself. So straight away, the first thing you're greeted by when opening the box is the case that it comes with. It's a transport case, and I do believe that claim as well, that it's a true transport case rather than just a around the house kind of storage case. I think it would serve well for actually taking the scope out in the field and keeping everything protected. Uh, it's a zipped up body, it's got a hard foam insert, which is also, I imagine, user modifiable to a degree if there's extra dead space you'd like to use by cutting out your own inserts i'm sure that, that would be totally possible uh, but as it stands it has room for the telescope and room for a camera and also a couple of other little gaps here and there that you could perhaps use for yourself um, the scope on its own actually is a 60 millimeter f5 quadruplet astrograph using fpl 53 glass that's great news in terms of colour correction and I can tell you as well that it does stand up to what you would expect from FPL 53. It performs really well. I've got a lot more to say about this later and some images to back it up too from testing that I performed. Next up, let's talk about the focuser itself. It's a very high quality unit, I think. Uh, I was really impressed by it. My only gripe, I'll talk about that first, is the fact that the locking bolt on the underside has the potential to move the focus point ever so slightly. Now, I say it's a minor gripe uh, because I haven't actually felt the need to use the locking bolt at any point. There's enough natural tension in the focus that it can support even a quite a heavy load, a mono camera, filter wheel, um, and all the associated parts that that comes with, with absolutely no problem whatsoever, you know, uh, even when facing right up towards Zenith. But still, it's something I noted, so I think it's worth mentioning. Um, other than that, the focus actually is a very limited travel, which is absolutely acceptable for an astrograph because you don't need tons of travel. Um, but I just wanted to make you aware of that in case you were thinking of maybe purchasing this as kind of a double duty grab and go visual scope as well as an astrograph. It's not that kind of thing. I would say it really is dedicated to astrophotography and it shows. Screwed into the back of the focuser itself is a threaded insert which actually terminates in an M48 male thread for attaching all your common accessories or your camera, things like that directly if you should wish. Um, but a cool thing about this is if you screw it actually out, you can fit into the back of it a two inch threaded filter. So you've no need to actually purchase you know, a separate filter drawer or anything like that. And I think this could be really useful if you want to use this telescope with something like a DSLR, which has a limited amount of back focus available to it anyway, you can simply use that to thread a filter in, pop your DSLR on its T-ring and, uh, you know, pop it straight on and away you go. No extra accessories needed. So that was a, a welcome feature to see. Now next up at the back of the scope, going slightly further forwards, is a camera angle rotator, which is included. It's got a really nice feel of natural tension to it once it's backed off you're not going to kind of overshoot by it being too slack or anything like that one cool thing about it is it, unlike some rotators that i've played with in the past uh, you can really crank down lock it up tight and there's no deflection notable whatsoever so uh, that's really nice to see it seems to be a quality unit now moving forward just a tiny little bit more 
you're greeted by a four point tip tilt adapter that's included on the telescope itself. This is a really cool feature, I think, because not every camera out there comes with a, you know, an integrated tilt plate or anything like that. So this actually makes sure that you've always got a way to adjust your tilt should you need to, which is actually quite a common task to perform as not every camera sensor comes completely flat, you know? Now moving another step further forwards is the integrated sliding dew shield. It's actually a really nicely made part. There's no movement present in it whatsoever, you know, side to side or anything like that. It just slides nice and linear and holds quite firmly in place. I think you'd have no problem really with such as an A4 tracing panel, which is what I'd commonly use on something like this to take my own flats um, with it pointed up towards Zenith, you know, if you're using something like Nina's integrated flats wizard, which wants you to point straight up um, for your flats. I don't think you'd have any problem holding against that kind of thing. Now then last and by no means least is the fact that it's got a top mounted kind of a, a handle on the top of the telescope. Uh, it's dovetailed for a QD style photographic accessory clamp, should you wish. You could put a few of those on there and hold multiple different types of accessories. It's got some threaded holes in there and also some slots too, which are great for passing things like pull ties around and getting excess cabling out of the way. That's nice to see. Now, as you look at the telescope from the back on your left hand side, as you can see where I've got the found and mounted, is a finder shoe, one of the kind of universal style ones um, and over on the right hand side of the telescope again when viewed from the back are a pair of blanking screws which you could mount another of those finer shoes on should you wish for holding something like an ASI Air or a similar kind of thing. One issue that I did note on my telescope however is that one of those blanking screws was missing. Not a real big problem but all the same I did note it so why not mention it. And I guess the absolute last thing to mention is the fact that this dovetail and the foot that it attaches to is actually a well adjustable unit. You can really kind of change the balance point of the whole rig and how you want to mount it by sliding that dovetail back and forth quite a long way. There's a, a wide range of adjustability and I think that no matter the camera that you want to put on this thing, uh, the kind of load on the back is going to be able to balance uh, out quite nicely thanks to the length of this dovetail and the uh, different positions you can put it. Now moving on to the actual testing of the telescope itself, the first thing that I wanted to really take a look at and put through the gauntlet if you will is the colour correction of the telescope. So to that end I devised a bit of a testing regimen where I made a bat enough mask for the telescope itself. I hooked it up with my monochrome camera, an IMX533 and some astronomic LRGB, hydrogen, oxygen and sulfur filters which are known to me to be completely par focal. So any and all focus shift that we notice by focusing in just one colour channel using this Binoff mask and then cycling through the rest of the filter wheel taking test exposures will be down to the optics in the telescope itself. It's a very thorough test, it's also a very brutal test really. Um, but I think it performed absolutely admirably. So here are the results that I got from this. So these are five second exposures on a very bright star focused in luminance. So as you can see, this is the luminance shot itself, perfectly focused. Now without making any adjustments for any of these, I then moved on to a four second exposure rather for the red filter. As you can see, they still in focus. Let's zoom in a little bit further for uh, the sake of showing you on the screen. Then onto the green filter, which showed a very minor focus shift. Blue filter, the same thing as the green, really. Nothing, nothing noticeable. I wouldn't say it needed a refocus or anything like that, but you absolutely could if you had a uh, automated focuser. Then onwards to hydrogen, back to perfect focus once again. Oxygen, very minor focus shift and sulfur. Again, back to perfect it looks. Now I also did a bat enough test with a one shot colour camera and uh, a rich star field. So I did this uh, with the APS-C sized sensor that I have, IMX571 uh, sensor. I did this in order to check the field flatness. So with a star, or rather stars, focused smack in the centre of the field of view, I wanted then to look around the rest of the field of view and sure enough in the extreme corners 
there is no defocus visible and that indicates to us that the field on this telescope is extremely flat indeed it's a really really promising performance to be quite honest with you is that uh, so I was uh, very impressed indeed as you can see each and every corner properly focused really flat field great to see now moving on a little bit further from those batting of mass tests um, that same region that I just showed you when we were indicating the field flatness of the telescope is imaged right here this is just 20 minutes on the double cluster I've really been struggling with weather conditions lately so uh, you'll have to forgive the fact that I don't have longer on this but all the same is a valid test it's just a star field and as you can see there's the center sharpness when zoomed into 100% let's say for sake of uh, comparison right here now let's take a look in each and every corner so top left absolute bottom left bottom right I do hope that this is coming across for you this kind of performance is absolutely fantastic to see it's extremely well color corrected and the field as we showed with that bite of mass test is completely flat too at least across APS see uh, the illumination by the way I did note while taking these subframes in Nina only drops off by about three to five ish percent from center field to absolute extreme corner so the illuminated circle over APS-C probably doesn't even need flats if your filters are clean and things like that it's, it's such a small drop off um, extremely impressive I thought now before I took off the monochrome camera, I got the best image I've taken with this thing uh, and it was 2 hours and 20 minutes or so effort on the Heart Nebula. Now let's take a look at the data individually. So this was the HA, this is just stacked and stretched as viewed in ASI Fits Viewer, so no processing whatsoever, just stacked. Oxygen 3 and Sulfur 2, hopefully you can see it's a beautifully sharp telescope uh, everywhere in there is coming up wonderfully well so down at the fish head let's say let's just take another look once again so sulfur oxygen and then the hydrogen alpha wonderful performance can't say enough good things about it really now moving a little bit further on uh, I wanted to show you a completed image from this thing so again the heart nebula data that we were just looking at it only totals up to about two hours and 20 minutes or something like that it wasn't much anyway um, but when fully processed i was able to take a few snippets out of it so this is the fish head nebula from the extreme bottom right as you can see really nicely resolved details a beautiful image in its own right at least i think so uh here is malot 15 looking really rather cool and then the full frame that I actually captured using that AMX533 mono um, and those astronomic filters I'm really impressed to be honest with you just for a couple of hours it's clearly showing you know it's, it's sharp that speed is uh, is working well in its favor f5 right there and I think you know if you can get this from a couple of hours a proper project something you know like 10 20 hours or something like that would get you an absolutely astonishing set of images so uh full marks from me really i've got to be honest with you as far as performance goes what it's intended for exceptional uh, really impressive well then guys as far as this review goes i think that that wraps things up quite nicely for me um i feel like i've done the best that i possibly can given the weather situation that we've been experiencing especially uh to give you the best review that i can and that's what it's really all about for me just giving you facts as i can and the data to back it up and uh, hopefully the stuff that we just took a look at those you know test images and also the processed final images do illustrate the fact that this is a great telescope uh, it claims to be an astrograph and at least from an astrophotographer's perspective every test that i set up for it you know it performed extremely admirably and um, the sharpness the overall field illumination quality the field flatness and the color correction there's nothing bad to be said do you know what i mean it put in a great performance and for whatever it's worth i'd be willing to give it my recommendation uh, to anybody out there looking at this kind of telescope on the market it should be you know you should be giving it some serious thought i think uh so yeah that's about it from me guys i'm going to wrap it up now i've taken up more than enough of your time i'd just like to say huge thanks 
to First Light Optics for the opportunity to actually take a look at this telescope personally and deliver to you the best review that I can. Um, if you've enjoyed the video, please do leave a like. And on that note, by the way, in terms of thanks, uh, the real big thanks goes out to you guys out there, without which your support uh, I wouldn't be in this position, getting things sent through for review, being able to do each day something that I love doing and make it my, my job, my career, if you will. Uh, I'm very happy to be in this position and I thank you. So thank you.